So um, thank you so very much, IEEE, IAS, BELS, uh, Kerala section for inviting me to uh, share my thoughts on switch reluctance motor or SRM. My name is Piyush Desai and I'm vice president of motor design and co-founder at Tuntide Technologies. I come from a very small, um, like a, a mid level, B level city in India. I only, the, the city had only uh, up to 10th grade and after 10th grade, uh, you have to go outside nearby city to study. I, I went to study for my undergrad, finished it in 92, spent 10 years in India, uh, working with uh, motors and drives. And at that point in time, back in 93, 94, induction motors and VFDs were just uh, like a, some very new advanced technology. And that's when I got exposed to motors and drives. And since then, I have worked in uh, power electronics, motors and controls for aerospace, PV solar and motor drives. I came to USA in 2002 to study um, for my uh, master's and PhD. And during that, when I came across switch reluctance motor and um, switch reluctance motors have been fascinating to me because of uh, some of the things I will cover in the presentation today. And uh, since then I have been working with uh, SRMs in some capacity in 2014 uh, I, I co-founded a company called Software Motor Corporation, which rebranded as Stun Tide Technology. So that's the short uh, uh, background about me. I really appreciate and thank everyone for coming in to watch my presentation on past, present, and future of SRM. So I'll start with uh the history and background of electric motors in general there are a couple people who made a lot of uh, contributions in electromagnetism which is the foundation for all electric motors there are many names i might be missing some names only three or four names come to my mind who made foundational seminal contribution there uh, andre ampere uh, is one of them. And uh, he gave us the relationship that the intensity of magnetic field is proportional to the current that it produces it. That laid the foundation of electromagnetism. Then comes Michael Faraday, who has been a very, very uh, passionate scientist, uh, devised so many experimentation. Um, on electromagnetism and he uh, established that uh, a, a, if there is a change in flux linking a coil, then a voltage is induced in the coil and that's equal to the time rate of change of flux linking the coil. Lenz gave, gave the direction of uh, this voltage which will be in the opposite direction. And third name comes to my mind, that's Lorenz. And uh, basically Lorenz um, gave the foundation for generator and electric motors. And in, as per his discoveries, we find that the, whenever there is a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, that current carrying conductor experiences magnetic uh, the electro electromagnetic force and that force experienced by this uh, conductor is proportional to the flux density the current and the length of the wire in the magnetic field electromagnetic electromagnetic advancement has been very fascinating but some of the key milestones in electromagnetism are listed here that in 1800 Alessandro Volta discovered Volta piles like the battery piles. Uh, that really changed this field fundamentally. In 1820, uh, Orsted observed 
that uh, the compass needle was moving when it was nearby a current carrying conductor. And he established that this was influenced by a magnetic field of the current. In 1821, Michael Faraday demonstrated this through a vertically suspended wires in uh, moving in a circular orbit around a magnet, electromagnet. In 1822, Peter Barlow uh, show a spinning wheel based on electromagnetic uh, field and uh, William Sturgeon develop electromagnetic uh, devices with enhanced magnetic field. Uh, before Sturgeon, the magnetic field was not strong enough to produce any practical work. They were all different kinds of toys. But William actually demonstrated that by putting a lot of current, a lot of tons around a soft magnetic material, you can actually make that magnetic field very powerful and can do some useful work. So this is a little bit of history and background into electromagnetism. Let's take a look at the switch reluctance motor history. Um, and I call them traditional SRM just to distinguish from the SRM that I invented, SRM um, concept that I invented. So SRMs have been actually the among the first electric machines to be in, uh, um, invented during 1800, 1830 to 1850. And there have been lots of demonstration of uh, electromagnetic engines. Back then, they were called electromagnetic engines, just like steam engines. Steam engines had valves and piston. Um, similarly, earlier electromagnetic engines had similar look and feel of steam engines. So this gives you a little bit of history that starting from 1830 to 1900, a lot of advancement uh, happened in electromagnetic motor side. And some of them has been contemporary. Multiple people invented multiple things separate from each other and they all looked quite similar. So it's fascinating to see that many people getting similar ideas independent of uh, each other and coming to some very powerful discoveries that changed the world. Really what changed the world was in 1883 when Nikola Tesla demonstrated a practical, useful, powerful AC induction motor. And then the rest is the history. Anyone who is really interested in knowing more about electric motors and the history and background of electric motors, uh, these are my four good references. Two are the books by T.J. Miller on switch electrons motor that covers a lot of early development on switch electrons motor history. Uh, and there are two websites. Uh, one is at ETI and other one is called Spark Museum. I, I have given the links over here. It's really fascinating. They, they give a lot of uh, interesting pictures uh, and stories about uh, the past of uh, electric uh, motors in general. Electric motors are, they come in lots of different types. They can, we call them electric machines because they can be motors or generators. We can classify them as DC machines or AC machines. Even though we have so many different types of electric machines, the predominant it is predom predominantly, there are four kinds. One is brush DC motors. Within brush DC, you have separately excited or series excited or shunt excited or perm magnet based brush DC machines. Or you have AC machines. Within AC machines, we have induction motor, we have permanent magnet motors and switch reluctance motor. Those are the three main dominant motor technologies on the AC side. And we are finding that SRMs, switch reluctance motors are proving to be the best value for price, performance and ruggedness. Just to, just to give you a little bit of idea about that, what is the fundamental difference between induction motor, permanent magnet motor or a switch reluctance motor? And the foundation is that how the force, the mechanical force is generated. 
on induction motor or in permanent magnet motors, the force is generated based on the Lorentz force, or we call it, it is a BLI force. B means magnetic flux density, L means length of the conductor, and I is the current through that conductor. So in permanent magnet motors or and, and in um, induction motor, you need a source of magnetic field and you need a current carrying conductor in that magnetic field to produce a Lorentz force. And that force is converted into torque. Versus in switch reluctance motor though, the force is proportional to the flux density squared and inversely proportional to the air gap. There is no BLI mechanism. It's a direct conversion from electromagnetics to reluctance force. And it's it, it, that the magnitude or amplitude of force depends on the magnetic flux density and the air gap. Uh, smaller the air gap, um, larger the force. So that's the fundamental difference between these three AC motors. Let's take a look at a typical SRM. SRMs are very simple machine. The rotor has no magnets or no windings. It's just a piece of lamination, a stack of lamination. Stator has coils. These are concentrated wound coils and that's it. So stator rotor comes out from punching machines. There is no more operation on the rotor. You can wind the um, coils directly on the stator or you can wind them on the bobbin and then put them on, uh, stick them to stator. So it's a very simple machine. Uh, it can come in a standard frame size uh, and uh, you, it, it can have the same form, fit and function of any other motor. Some characteristic of uh, switch reluctance uh, uh, motor and the underlying principle is why we call it switch reluctance motor is because it's the tendency of this motor to minimize the reluctance by aligning the stator and rotor poles. Fluid, electric current, magnetic field, they all like to go through the path of least resistance, means, means least reluctance, means higher inductance. So that's the fundamental operating principle of switch reluctance uh, motor. Why we call it switched? Because once the stator and rotor poles are aligned, now you need to switch to the next phase so that the rotor keep chasing the, the phase that is excited. And that's how you get continuous uh, motion. The green are the advantages and red are disadvantages of uh, switch reluctance motor. So some of the advantages that there are no uh, magnets or winding on the rotor. This allows you to provide very simple construction, uh, rugged and reliable, high temperature is not a problem. There are no magnets that would fly off. So you can run it at a very high speed like 50,000, 100,000, one lakh RPM, two lakh RPM, no problem with switch reluctance motor. Insulation is, because of, distribute, uh, because of distributed winding induction motors, permanent magnet motors, they are prone to face-to-face, face-to-ground shorts. In SRM, you have concentrated windings, which makes insulation scheme very robust. Rotor has no, uh, rotor has no copper losses or eddy current losses. That means rotor is cooler. That means bearings run cooler. That gives you uh, higher life for the bearing. One, uh, all phases are independent of each other. So uh, if one phase has a problem, uh, you can still operate these at with two phases with some reduced power and you can, uh, it's called limp home capabilities. Uh, so, so many advantages, but why switch reluctance motors weren't really famous or why don't we see them? Because of some of their uh, challenges. Uh, peak efficiency is lower, power density uh, is, is, is not that, that high. Uh, noise and vibration and torque ripple uh, have, have been big problems with SRMs. 
SRMs are highly nonlinear and that makes them very hard to design and they're even harder to control. They need power electronics. They cannot run directly like an induction motor. And uh, running a SRM requires um, position feedback for control because it's, it has a strong dependency. Performance has strong dependencies on, on um, the position. So these were the, the issues with, uh, with SRM that prevented them from becoming um, popular. So commercial reality is that uh, SRM shows multiple, so multiple waves. In 1830 to 1850, it looked very promising, but then everything changed with, uh, with the invention of uh, AC induction motor, and since then it dominated everything. The second wave of SRM came in 1860 when thyristors and power transistors were invented. See, the fundamental limitation with SRM has been that you have to switch the phases. Earlier, it was very hard. With thyristors and power transistor, it became a little bit easier. And then late, uh, late in uh, 1980s, Professor Lawrenson from University of Leeds in UK founded SR drives and they developed a lot of uh, SRMs for many applications, for, for uh, appliances, for machineries, for earth moving and mining machineries, for aerospace applications. So they really uh, revived SRMs in eight, uh, 1980s. And since then, we have seen SRMs for many applications, mostly for high reliability applications like um, cooling tower on a nuclear power plant. Uh, the picture on the right shows a two megawatt SRM for a ship propulsion application. But SRMs still remain the future technology. It didn't come like a current technology. It, it remained always like a future technology. 2004, 2014, Department of Energy in USA published a report comparing induction motor, permanent magnet motor, and SRM motors and gave them scoring. Based on the DOE scoring, SRM scored 42, but the problem were maturity of technology, power density, uh, noise and vibration, efficiency, and torque ripple. Those were couple uh, problems with uh, SRM. So uh, that brings us to SRM present that, well, what changed that we at Turntide believe that SRM is, um, uh, the time for SRM has come and uh, what makes them uh, acceptable now and what makes them the best candidate now. So I'll, I'll walk you through the story of uh, high rotor pole SRM or HRSRM. And that's the present situation with SRM. This story uh, started back in 2003. Here in the lower left corner, you see me working in lab in 2003 uh, during my uh, research. Um, I, I came up with this idea of uh, putting in more rotor poles in SRM. Traditionally, SRMs are six stator poles and four rotor poles for a three-phase SRM, or maybe eight rotor poles, but no more than eight rotor poles because the saliency ratio reduces and uh, core losses increases, and that makes them uh, not desirable. But uh, with my high rotor pole SRM, which I applied for a patent in 2004, patent was granted in 2014, I demonstrated that putting in high rotor poles actually gives you higher power density, increases the efficiency. In 2002, um, in 2009, uh, a company started commercializing this uh, HRSRM patent. In 2012, they won a Clean Tech Energy Challenge Award. In 2014, Software Motor Company was founded. We designed our first uh, commercial SRMs in 2016. And you can see here 
our warehouse with lots of uh, motors now. We have thousands and thousands of motors in uh, installation and running, uh, proving the energy saving. And uh, uh, we have thousands of them in our inventory. In 2000, in two, we first installed our uh, SRM in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning rooftop unit, HVAC RTU, rooftop unit, heating, ventilation, air conditioning unit, because of some unique advantages there for energy saving. Uh, in 2019, we develop um, Q series motors, which are quiet, that reduces SRM noise by 12 to 15 dB. Uh, and uh, since then, we have been developing um, many motors. We currently have up to 25 horsepower motors and drives. We have some custom uh, motors for direct drive applications for low torque, high speed. So briefly giving you an idea and comparing the high rotor pole SRM, HR SRM with traditional SRM that uh, Stator still has six um, uh, Stator poles but rotor poles are changed based on a formula. I call it PD formula, pole design formula, Buse desai formula, and that gives the relationship between stator and rotor poles for any given number of phase. The benefit of HR SRM is that you now have more space for the copper that gives you higher efficiency. We all know that electric motors and power electronics is limited by thermal. So if your efficiency goes up, your thermal dissipation goes down, that provides you the opportunity to increase the power density, produce more torque, also reduces the torque ripple and gives lower noise and vibration. Here is the formula for torque. And as you can see, that average torque is proportional to the change in core energy, number of phases, and number of rotor poles. So by by increasing NR, which is the number of rotor poles, you increase the torque. So by increasing the rotor poles, you get higher torque, you get the more winding space, and that gives you higher efficiency. Turn tight motor system has three components, ultra efficient motor. These motors need special uh, power electronic base controllers. So we make our own motor controller and we have cloud devices, we call them supervisor. So those are our hardware components. And then on the software side, we have IoT software, cloud software, data monitoring and analytics. I'll quickly go through each of uh, uh, these system components. Together, they provide highest efficiency, smartest uh, and highly reliable motor system which is inherently better than other uh, induction motor-based systems. Um, our motors are patented HRSRM design. Uh, they come in um, NEMA and IEC standard frame sizes. So you can take this motor and replace with an induction, uh, induction motor. They are highly reliable. Uh, they get three-year warranty. On our motor controller side, we have a very fast DSP dual core. It maintains the precise control and high efficiency throughout the uh, operating speed from low RPM to high RPM. It has a lot of configurable inputs and outputs, many different protocols to support for communication. Uh, and uh, we, it allows the firmware upgrade over the air, OTA over the air upgrades of the firmware, just like in Tesla car. Uh, inside the motor controller is a classic uh, asymmetric bridge, like a textbook asymmetric bridge. We use a custom made power electronics devices uh, for the asymmetric bridge. Our supervisor has a, uh, it's a Linux based uh, kernel real time operating system has a built in uh, lots of built in uh, communication protocol, Wi Fi capabilities, uh, cellular connectivity. Uh, and it's the uh, gateway to cloud storage provides real time analytics data monitoring and allows the firmware upgrade over the over over the air. And we have 
uh, powerful cloud services that gives data storage analytics encryption and uh, integration capabilities with the rest of the system so overall system architecture is that each motor is operated by a motor controller motor controller has multiple uh, configurable inputs and outputs digital inputs outputs analog inputs outputs and they are able to communicate directly or via supervisor and that uh, supervisor becomes the gateway to talk to an, any existing automation system like PLC, building management system, or cloud and data analytics. This architecture is very flexible and scalable. And what it does is that this real-time monitoring and analytics provide a lot of useful data so that better business decision can be made. So in, 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 uh, in short, we have three series. We have V series for rooftop, heating, ventilation, air conditioning applications. We have Q series for quiet applications. And we have TX series for direct drive, high torque, low speed applications. Motors are everywhere. And um, anything that moves has a motor. Motors consume almost half of the world's electricity, and that's why making motors more efficient is very important for addressing the climate crisis and sustainability. We believe that we can do that with our HRSRM technology because you may know that all motors today are not very high efficiency. For example, one horsepower NEMA, which is a, a, a standard for uh, USA, um, um, one horsepower NEMA efficiency is 85.1, but that is only at rated conditions. When you operate that on a fan, and you know that fan has a cubic relationship between speed and power, when you run at half the speed, the power is 1.8, so you're not operating induction motor at the rated conditions, rated speed and rated torque, and the efficiency is drastically uh, reduces going from 85% to 70%. And as you can see on the top curve blue, that's our turn tight smart motor system through software and high efficiency motor. We maintain uh, very high efficiency throughout the torque and speed. And as you can see, it's at 600 RPM, it, the efficiency difference is about 17%. We see similar efficiency difference for a three horsepower motor also. So the point I'm trying to make is that even though you can get a high efficiency induction motor, but that's only at the rated condition. When you apply it to a fan, when you apply the cubic relationship, here you can see the difference what happens when it is running at one third the speed. Instead of 1500 RPM or 1800 RPM, it runs at 500 RPM or 600 RPM. And it's one, uh, one sixteenth the power. Efficiency is almost 30% lower. We have thousands of motors running in the field, currently providing great energy savings and a lot of independent third party have verified our energy saving claims. Look at these numbers. These are all third party independent validation of how much energy savings they have achieved with using turn tide smart motor system with HRSRM technology. One study says 31%, another study says 57%. Third study says 71%, and that is from NREL, National Renewable Energy Lab, is one of the most um, famous labs in USA. And think about if we are able to bring these kind of energy savings into other applications, not just on the fans, but on pumps and on other machines and in electric vehicles, um, how much impact it would make. So here, Putting in the same DOE report, and if I add HRSRM scores, where we, where we address the power density and efficiency problem, where we improve the torque ripple, where we improve the noise and vibrations, the scores for 
score comparison goes up almost 50% better than induction motor. So overall comparison between these three motor technologies on efficiency, reliability, affordability, and smart um, networking, we believe that SMC, <laughs> that's, it should say turn tight now, Software Motor Corporation, Software Motor Company was the previous name. Uh, now it is turn tight. And here are some of the pictures of our actual physical prototype. We, ha we have cut them, we have sliced them, we have done a lot of destructive testing on them to, to check. Um, so it's very interesting to see um, some of these things. Uh, the, the biggest um, advanced, advantage that we have as a difference between past and present is that now the computation power is way more cheaper than back in 1980s. Powerful computers, powerful DSPs, powerful simulation tools, powerful control tools, that has all made this possible. And we rely on simulation. So we call it simulation driven innovation. There are no spreadsheet based SRM design tools. Uh, SRMs are very hard to design because of their nonlinear physics and they operate in saturation. SRM has strong dependencies on control, your turn on angle, turn off angle, your current. They are nonlinear for torque and efficiency. And SRM has about um, nine to 10 different parameters, which has first order impact on the performance. So you need to include all of them into the design uh, variation to optimize it. And when you are dealing with these many parameters, which has wide range of uh, changes, it is just hard. We use ANSYS tools um, for doing our simulations. And we believe in virtual prototyping because physically iterative design is not viable, it is expensive. So we live and we work in simulation driven environment where we can uh, do thousands of iterations and optimize the motor and um, controller that allows us to uh, do things faster, cheaper and better. This reduces the development time and cost. Also in simulation, we can go and include multi-physics that can capture real world physical interactions between various system components, not, not just the torque and speed and efficiencies, but we can look at eigenmodes and eigenfrequencies for vibrations and acoustic performance. We can look at structural um, data for stress and fatigue. And Turntide and ANSYS has a uh, deep partnership about uh, simulation driven approach on uh, switch reluctance motors. Our current approach is that we do open loop optimization means motor inverter and system components are uh, optimized locally and individually. So we, we any physics that's not validated, we rely on some prototyping to ensure that optimized components mean optimal system. And this has allowed us to really address some of the challenges with uh, SRM and made them high efficiency. So our approach is that we simulate uh, transient, we go 2D, we do 3D and we simulate thousands and thousands of designs. And here you see on the right side, uh, there are lots of dots and each dot is a unique simulation, is a unique design. And you can see that how um, living in simulation environment and simulation world allows us to do these thousands of uh, iterations, which is impossible to do in physical world. Um, it's very important to calibrate, verify, calibrate and validate simulation models so that what the models are predicting is correct, real and accurate. 
Here on the left side, you can see some comparison between the simulated current waveforms and actual waveforms on the scope. On the right side, you see comparison between test data and FEA data from 900 RPM to 3000 RPM, going from 10% torque to 100% torque. Our predictions are within 1%. And because of the simulations and validation and the range bound correlation that we are able to go from initial specifications to factory built samples uh, ready for certification in uh, uh, less than nine months, which is, uh, which is very impressive. Uh, our, our vision for future is to do closed loop simulations between all the system components and the operating environment uh, and, and uh, external uh, uh, requirements. So we will take the inputs from uh, uh, requirements and specifications and we will optimize simultaneously uh, the motors, the controllers, the pump or fan or whichever system is being driven by the motor is a closed loop, multi-dimensional, multi-objective optimization and refine this approach uh, until we have an optimized system. So it's a complete system level optimization. That's a, a project that we have currently going on in partnership with ANSYS. We, uh, we want to utilize cloud-based simulation that allows very high compute power because for system level optimization, when we are dealing with multi-physics, the number of variables and, num and, and number of optimization loops grows exponentially. So you need a very, very powerful computers to run these simulations. And uh, cloud allows us to do it. And once it's in cloud, a multi-physics uh, simulation that means that we can simultaneously evaluate many variables and conditions for a truly optimal system, not just an optimal motor or an optimal controller, but it's a truly an optimal system. And this environment, this platform or the virtual design tool can be continuously refined with the measurement data to improve the prediction accuracies. So I just went through the, the past of uh, SRM and the presence of uh, present situation with SRM at Turntide, how we have really made tremendous improvement and uh, solved some of the challenges with SRM that many considered impossible until now. And in doing so, we rely on our patented motor technology, we have patented sensorless control. Our control uh, optimizes the motor efficiency in real time. And we have a simulation driven powerful uh, tools to improve all the performance. And that means uh, that gives us a, a strong confidence in the technology um, that SRM are really um, able to compete in many challenging applications. So with that, I would like to make a bold, ambitious vision for future of SRM in e-mobility. Now, what currently we have is a heating, ventilation, air conditioning type of applications uh, running uh, and replacing standard induction motors. Uh, E-mobility has more challenges, has more demanding needs. So that's why it is future. We need to get there. We need to work hard. And I would like to present a case that why I think SRM has a scope in E-application. It's because SRM technology is improving more rapidly than any other uh, technology. In lab, SRM has shown uh, that it can meet or exceed interior fern magnet performance. And SRMs, has so, SRMs have so many advantages, which are very hard to kind of ignore. Um, in last 10 years alone at Turntide, we have seen that 
SRM efficiency went up quite a bit. We, our motor efficiencies are now in higher, mid to uh, high, uh, above 90%, up to 94% we have seen in our lab. Power density, we have increased the power density because when you increase the efficiency, your thermal losses goes down. So it increases the power density. And with our Q series, we have reduced, we, we have Q series and we have waveform shaping algorithm that reduces the noise up to 20 dB. Now think about this, it's a 20 dB, dB. It's not like 20%. So it's a huge, like three dB is 70% amplitude, 50% energy reduction. So it's a huge reduction in amplitude and energy. And that gives us hope and confidence that maybe SRMs can be used in e-mobility. Tokyo Institute of Technology, Professor Chiba, uh, we have a, a research project with him uh, for last uh, several years. And in, in his work, independent work in 2016, he developed an SRM to uh, in a similar size of a Toyota Prius IPM. Prius is a hybrid electric motor, a hybrid electric car, one of the most successful hybrid electric cars, hybrid car. Uh, it comes in many different versions now, but he took the same OD and same actual length and developed uh, an 18 stator pole, 12 rotor poles, SRM without any magnets. And here is the comparison. That SRM required 4% lower current, produced 67% higher power with 8% more weight. So the weight was 3 kg more, but it bits, it exceeds IPM performance in most places. So here is a comparison, is a difference between SRM efficiency and IPM efficiency. So it's not the actual efficiency, but it's the difference between the efficiencies of SRM. So SRM efficiency minus IPM efficiency in this torque speed curve, except low speed high torque area, which is blue, which means that SRM had a lower efficiency. Everywhere else it is green and red. Green and red means SRM in those operating points, in those operating conditions, SRM produced better performance. In some cases, it gave up to 10% higher efficiencies. Think about this. This better efficiency means lower battery size, means lower cost, means higher range, means now EVs are more affordable and um, so that's the case for why we think uh, that SRMs can be um, useful there. And that is without any magnets or any rare earth, rare earth material. Because the problem with rare earth magnet is that supply chain dependencies, 90% uh, of rare earth comes from uh, China. Uh, and that has geopolitical risk, that has supply chain risk. Also, why does 90% magnet comes from China? Because these magnets rely on rare earth material and excavating or mining these rare earth materials is very damaging to the environment, to the ecosystem, to the water bodies, to the air around us and has a lot of uh, detrimental effect. So it's not like these rare earth magnets are rare earth materials are not available anywhere else. They are available at many places. Most advanced countries, they do not mine rare earth metal just because of the huge damage that they cause on environment. So in summary, SRM has many advantages. Uh, high temperature applications, high speed, extended constant power, simple machine, cheaper to make. All the material is locally sourced and available. It is reliable, improves the life, no magnets to fight at, low, uh, at, at higher speeds or during deacceleration or at idling or during field weakening. Also, one of the nightmare scenario is when you are working with an IPM and when you are running in field weakening mode, if 
there is a failure, then it can create excessive high voltages. So all these advantages are really compelling and maybe there is a scope for SRMs in EV. Uh, it's a, just a very ambitious goal. I understand that there is a long road ahead from where we are to where it needs to be in terms of being suitable for uh, EV and e-mobility applications. But hey, we need to be ambitious. We need to be bold. We need to dream big. Uh, and failure is not a failure if it teaches us something. Future is very exciting for anyone who is in the field of power electronics, motors, and drives. There has never been a more exciting time for this field. I have never seen anything before that produces the electricity, like 90% of the electricity is produced by electric machine and 50% is consumed by electric machine. As a generator, they produce electricity, as motor, they consume it. There is no other technology that sits at the entry and exit of this energy food chain. Future is very exciting. There are a lot of new advancement coming in amorphous and nanocrystalline material that has superior magnetic properties. People are experimenting with 3D printed or injection moldable steel with some uh, uh, nanotechnology. A um, lot of experimentation going on with increasing uh, um, the conductivity and creating superconductors at room temperature with nanotechnology. Um, uh, also some novel things about using the motor and its magnetic field and the leakage, leakages of the magnetic field to use as suspended bearings and reduce the friction and uh, 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 bearing drag. And some more that you are all uh, very passionately uh, working and researching. With that, I would like to stop here. Thank you so very much for giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts, my experience, uh, and my journey on SRM. Thank you so very much. And I would now uh, stop here. <laughs>